Hi everyone, welcome to Best Practices. My name is Neil Bobser. I'm Medscape Medical Student Representative. Today I'm sitting down with Dr. Tao Lee from uh, Scholar Rx, the creator of First Aid, who will be talking about the First Aid series. So again, welcome Dr. Tao Lee. Thanks so much for sitting with us. What are some recommendations on how to best use USMLE Rx? So, uh, the, 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 um, so uh, USMLE Rx works best if you use it longitudinally with your coursework, right? So. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I would suggest that um, you use it, you know, starting about a year, maybe a year and a half before your actual course. And people say, wow, that's a long time. But if you think about it, time flies when you are, you know, when you're really like engrossing you know, things and, and all of a sudden, then all of a sudden you realize, oh, my gosh, I feel like I don't have enough time, right? But if you, actually, if you actually invest and use it along your coursework all along the way, then you know, uh, uh, then you're going to be that much more prepared for the boards. And uh, you know, uh, in our you know in our previous discussion, we talked about the, the spacing effect, right? And so the idea is that you're re you're re exposing yourself to all these concepts and actively learning them, you know, many times throughout the year. Uh, you know, you're, you're obviously using your first aid book. You're using uh, you can use US Lyrics questions. And the way students uh, can do that is they could use the questions before or after class. Um, just like I, I think I mentioned the uh, other the discussion, I like the students to use it before they get to class. So you do the questions, you, you're, you're pre presented with a, a case vignette. You don't actually know exactly how to solve this yet. Uh, you're going you're gonna to inevitably stumble, but then that creates questions, right? You're like, well, why did I get that question wrong? What was I missing? Oh, okay. And then, and, and so then you come into class primed to look for the answers, right? And um, uh, uh, and, and then, you, of course, you can also look for the answers in first aid. And students, of course, you know, when they go between US Linear X, the question bank, and first aid, you know, they'll annotate. And as you know, obviously, in US, US Linear X, we provide, you know, the, 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 the first aid facts at the very end. So you can see where they're at. Then yeah. you, you can either annotate there, you know, if you, especially if you have the ARX360 package, which allows you to annotate first aid. Or you can go straight to the book and then annotate there as well too. So, so bottom line, use first aid with your coursework throughout the year, especially as soon as your, at a minimum, as soon as your your curriculum goes into organ systems. Most most curriculums are organ systems, right? So they have the integration of the now yeah. the pathology, the pharmacology, and so forth. Use it along the way. Same thing if with your with the the the, the first aid flashbacks. Do that along the way. And as I mentioned in in the other talk. Um, flash tracks is a fantastic way to actively learn first aid because after the, after you get the answer to each digital flashcard, you get the direct, uh, you know, section out of first aid that's, you know, that's uh, keyed to that uh, flashcard. And so you're, 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 you're getting multiple passes through first aid just by doing the digital flashcards. And again, do that, you know, just like you're, you're doing your Anki, try to do, you know, anywhere between, if you're, if you're starting your second year, Try to do anywhere between 50 to 100 flashcards uh, a day. Yeah, and take more than five to 10 minutes. It's really fast, uh, or you know, five to 15 minutes, uh, and and that gives you the the testing effect and the spacing effect over and over again. And so that that's how you learn it from a cognitive psychology standpoint. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. I see a lot of students using Anki, but that's very interesting that uh, the the flashcards have first aid right there so you have another pass alongside the question exactly exactly i just want to transition into the explanations how can students take the most information and learn the best while reading the explanations of us linear rx yeah so 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 the explanations of us linear rx are, are actually very unique uh and you know obviously there are other question banks out there but the one thing that we do i think uh, um, really well and, and just about better than anybody else is that the um, the, the explanations are actually patient centered and case centered because think about it next year when you when you're on internal medicine or whatever you're you're you're, you're, you're that, that person in front of you is not a multiple choice question right that that person's a person right and so you're going to be trying to solve it through their eyes what what they're what, what what information they're giving you and so we try to we try to you know uh, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, position all the information through a little bit through the eyes of the patient. They're presenting this, they're saying this, but it means that what they're actually having is dyspnea, dyspnea exertion. But but they told you because they were work, walking up some stairs and they were having some problems, right? Uh, and then so we break it down that way, and then we logically break down the multiple steps that you have to go through to um, to solve the question. 
And so, you know, uh, you know, so if you, if once you go through these explanations over time, you'll realize that, you know, based on the stem, based on uh, the stem is the, the case. And then based on what's called the lead in, the lead is the actual question. Uh -huh. uh, so, um, you know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give you the tools to figure out whether that's a one step question, a two step question, a three step question, and the sequence that you have to solve each of the steps to be able to get to that answer. But it starts with actually being able to break down the case through the eyes of the patient, which by the way, is what you want to do when you're a good doctor. You know, so um, whereas a lot of other explanations tend to be very disease centric, they'll just say, ah, oh, this is asthma or hey, this is COPD. Then they, then they try to track backwards, but that's the wrong way to approach it. You got to actually look at through the eyes of the patient, you know. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's very unique. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Hey, what's up? Thanks so much for checking out the video. See you next time. If you want to find out more information about other resources, check out the link right over here. I know the USMLE journey is not fun, but hopefully these videos are helping you out. Let us know in the comments how to make them better. See you next time.